I am the owner and artist of the Copper Elm, and today I'm painting drawer fronts. Super simple. I'm gonna kind of walk you through the basic steps. So if you are new to painting, especially new with Wiesel or any chalk style paint, this is the video for you. We've got good old chalk synthesis paint from Wiesel. This one I'm using is black. Um, this or drawer goes into a coffee table that is over the top dramatic. So the drawers are going to be simple and crisp and clean black. When you are using Wiesel chalk synthesis paint, the biggest thing you can do is give yourself a good, good place to start. So for this piece, I've already cleaned, scuff sanded and primed. Um, that is not always necessary. This was just a super shiny surface and I knew my paint wasn't gonna stick to it. But for the most part, chalk synthesis paint is going to be really, really adhesive. It's super porous, so it's gonna stick to most things, but do a little bit of prep work in the beginning so that you have the best results. Clean your piece no matter what, and then clean it again with clean water. That way you're getting all your soap residue or cleaning products off of it so you don't have any adherence issues with that. Um, then take a little sandpaper if you want and give it a quick scuff sanding. If you're doing something that's raw wood, you totally don't need to do any of this. Just need to clean it. But if it's got any um, slickness to it whatsoever, a rough sanding paper, just kind of ugly it up a little bit. Give it some tooth so that your paint can stick to it. If it's super, super slick or you're painting a dark, dark piece like something that's going to bleed a lot like mahogany, cherry, things like that, and you're going to paint it white or um, a cream color or a light gray, go ahead and prime it to lock in all those tannins. Or if you have a super slick surface like I had, kind of do all of it just to be super safe. I think this will be a piece that will be used a lot, so I want to go above and beyond and make sure that I've got the best chance um, for success in the end. So, like I said, I cleaned it, I scuff sanded it, I primed it. Today I used uh, the gray primer on this one, and it actually, it looks a little white in the picture, or in the video, but if you could see it up close, it's, it's more of a gray, and I actually only did one coat. If I had done two, you'd see more of the gray coming through, but it wasn't necessary. I'm not doing this for stain blocking purposes today. I just wanted to have a little more sticky for my paint to go on. Um, so I'm not too worried. So I only needed one coat of primer. You don't need to waste product when it's not necessary. And like I said, I'm using YSL chalk synthesis paint in black. And um, when you're using this, this is one of those things where I'm gonna do this a lot, where I say, do as I say, not as I do. Take your paint and pour it into another container. You want to have um, a smaller portion of your paint in a small container. That way you are not dipping your paintbrush into your can. The reason for that is that Wiesel paint is super eco-friendly, it's non-toxic, there's not a lot of chemicals in it to preserve the paint. And because of that, any contaminants on your paintbrush can actually contaminate your paint and cause it to mold or mildew over time and you're gonna waste paint. So take uh, a, little, a little bit of paint, scoop it into a cup. I'm actually nearing the end of my container, so I'm, I'm not worried about contamination anymore, so I'm gonna dip right into my paint, brush, or my paint. And just so you know, I'm using a Klingon S30 today. This is um, the oval-shaped, small, stubby-handled brush. And there's, in the stubby handles, there are an S50 and an S30. The S30 is the smaller one. It's about an inch, inch and a half um, paintbrush. Super, super good for something like this where you need flat surfaces to be painted, plus trim work, you've got um, details that you need to get into, you've got curved edges around the end here. So pretty much flat surfaces, you go with a flat paintbrush, round surfaces, you go with a round. If you've got a, a combo of all of that in your project and you don't wanna switch back and forth between paintbrushes, an oval is perfect because an oval is pretty much a combination of flat and round. So go with an oval on something like this and you won't be sorry. And I love the S30 because it's got a short little handle and it just feels right, it's not too heavy. Um, when I'm using these, I hold it similar to how I would hold a big magic marker. Think of how you're holding a pen and kind of cradle it into uh, the little nook between your thumb and your forefinger. And we'll go into a, a whole long spiel about paintbrushes and why you choose which one over the other on another video. But for today, the S30 is gonna rock. I'm just gonna dip it into the paint. You can see right here, I went about a third of the way up, a third to a half of the way up my bristles. I'm just gonna let some of it drip off. You don't need this to be completely full of paint. You don't need it oversaturated. And just a heads up, I do have some water on my paintbrush. 
Um, when you're using a Klingon or a synthetic brush and a chalk style paint, using a damp brush is super, super key to getting that nice, smooth, even finish in the end. So I personally am going to do a quick run on the main flat areas, and then I'm gonna come back in and do this trim work. Now this is up to you on which direction you wanna go. If you wanna do your trim first and get that taken care of, you can, but basically I'm gonna start with my flat surface, I'm gonna come back and do the trim, and then I'm gonna hit up that flat surface one more time, and we'll have a nice even finish. So I'm taking this little brush, and you can kind of wedge it into the corners. You don't wanna be mean to your Klingons, they are good to you, be good to them, but you can kind of tap it into the corners there, and it, you don't have to pull out tiny little artist brushes, this is gonna get into all the nooks and crannies for you. I've done about half of it to two thirds, and I'm just now dipping into some more paint. And we're gonna, you can see the coverage is pretty darn good. This is with a damp brush. If you add more water to your paint or your brush, you're gonna have thinner coverage, but it's going to self-level a little bit more. So you've gotta decide how important self-leveling is and how important coverage is to you. I personally prefer to do multiple thin, even coats that level out beautifully as they dry versus um, one thicker coat that only needs one co coat coverage, but it's going to maybe show some of those brush marks a little bit more. I prefer that super, super smooth finish. I want it to look like I sprayed the paint on. I don't want people to notice that I used a paintbrush and I want it to be flawless. So I've got the center panel is on. Um, just looking at it while it's wet, there's already no brush strokes. It's super smooth as it is. That's going to get even better as it dries. This paint dries to a super flat matte finish. And as it's doing that, as it's drying, it's just gonna even out like crazy. You're gonna look like a pro no matter what. So now that I've got the front panel done, I'm gonna go ahead and start working on this trim. So I loaded my paintbrush up again. And for me personally, I like to coat it on there a little bit and then I come back through and go uh, from left to right. So I'm gonna get into each one of those nooks and crannies. And I, pardon me, I keep looking at the camera because I wanna, or the screen, because I wanna be able to see if I'm getting in that nook and cranny because I can't see from the angle I'm at. Um, but you're gonna kinda get in there. There we go. Just up and down, and then you're gonna go back and forth, hatch it across. That way you're getting into every single one of those nooks and crannies. Once you've got that good in there, you can go ahead and smooth out the edge. So for me, that's gonna go all the way around to the end. And then we'll start on the next part. So once again, load your brush up, coat it on there, and then go back and forth. That way it's going in all those nooks and crannies. Once you get it in there, do another quick swipe up and down, and you're good to go. If at any point you feel like your paintbrush is starting to drag, if you feel resistance, against your bristles, grab a water bottle. This is going to be your best friend. Take that little water bottle, give it a quick little spritz. The finer mist, the better. Um, you don't want to pour water on there. You don't want to have a, a super strong squirt of water that takes your paint away or makes it drip. You just want to mist it. If you're nervous, let's say you're blending and you've got it on there and it's looking beautiful but you're getting resistance and you don't wanna spray water on because it might make your paint drip or mess up your finish, take your brush and just spray your brush instead. Put it over a paper towel, give it a quick spritz and then keep painting. The damp brush, the added water is going to make your finish super, super smooth. But in general, Wiseau is actually um, pretty good consistency on its own. A lot of paint brands I've used, you have to add water straight to the paint in order for it to even flow in the first place. Um, you can jump in with Wiseau and, and not have to worry about that. It's just that, especially here in Colorado, it's so dry that the paint will start drying as you're going. So you just want to keep it nice and smooth and even. So let me switch this around a little bit so you can see where we're going. How's that look? Super easy, right? Um, the coverage on it is great. If I wasn't, you know, painting this backwards, I'd have the whole thing done in a heartbeat. Um, you would let this dry technically four to six hours in between coats. If you are in Colorado or anywhere dry like me, if you're in Arizona or something like that, 
I can get away with about an hour in between coats and it's totally good to go. If you do a thicker coat of paint, you're going to need more dry time. If you do super thick coat of paint and you don't let it completely dry and you add that second coat, it can crackle. So thinner coats are better. Give it ample dry time so that it's got a nice dry surface before you go and add more paint to it. This, even with black, which is super hard, I'd say two coats max, I'm good to go. Um, I let it dry for a couple more hours after my second coat and it'll be ready for varnish. Super easy, right? You can't go wrong. Um, grab yourself a good little brush, something that'll get into the nooks and crannies. Tailor your brush to your project. Um, if you want one brush that's going to be good for any project and not something specific, go with an oval because you can't go wrong with it. Um, and if you have any questions about different types of brushes that you should use, if you want something for a specific project, just leave me a comment and I will walk you through the whole thing. And I think I'm gonna let this dry. I'm gonna get started on the other side. And if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I'm new to the whole world of YouTube, so bear with me for a little while as we get used to these videos. And if you would mind subscribing, that would just make my world. So I'm not just hanging out talking to myself. And then you get to catch all the videos as they're coming. There's gonna be a ton coming this way. So let me know what you think. And I hope you guys have fun painting.